What's up, family? It's your man, Daryl Alder II. Uh, let me start off by saying, you know what it is, Super Bowl champs, Chiefs. I'm going to go ahead and rep that because, you know, my hometown was Kansas City. So, you know, I got I to gotta talk my talk my truth. <laughs> but I wanted to drop this word really quick while I'm on a little break. Um, <clears throat> I began to reflect on the goodness of the Lord. And I remember uh, about a year ago, um, I probably said this in a video. I don't remember if I did or not. I think I did. But I remember um, just the miraculous of the Lord. For those of you who don't know, I I, um, I have sleep apnea. I've had it for some years and it's not a fun thing. In fact, I had it at a period of time years ago. I didn't even know I had it and I was always just tired. And so um, I have mild sleep apnea, but it does impact you, especially when you um, don't use your machine. You get fatigued easily. You don't feel fully rested. You don't go into uh, rapid eye movement sleep, REM sleep. So I remember years ago, um, I was... Um, I had left the house I was in, the apartment I was in, when the whole skunk situation happened. Moved uh, somewhere else with some family, then moved somewhere else um, with a roommate. That didn't last long. But during that time, my machine had gotten exposed to some chemicals. And so when I would use it, I would try to wash it and everything, but I was breathing in uh, chemical stuff that was getting me sick. So I couldn't use the machine. And when I called the company to get a new machine, they were like, at first they said no, but then I was able to convince someone to listen to me. Because first the machine got exposed to the skunk stuff. And I was like, hey man, I can't use this machine, man. It smells like skunk. And she went, listen to me. She's like, what, you know, your, your, uh, what did she say? Your coverage isn't up for a new machine. You're not due. So she wouldn't do it. So then I called again sometime later after this chemical thing. And, um, the guy was cool. But he said, but, we, but during COVID time, he said, we can't guarantee the time of when you're going to get the machine because a lot of people want one and they're ordering one at the same time. So I said, all right. I'd move back here with my parents uh, to uh, find my new spot. And I remember I was just sleeping on the couch. And I couldn't use the machine because every time I did, I was inhaling chemicals and I would get sick. So I had to trust God and say, okay, Lord, well, I ordered a machine, uh, but we don't know when it's going to come. So I'm just going to trust you that, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to die in my sleep. You know, I wasn't worried about that. I was like, all right, I, I trust you. And during that time, I started doing a lot of walking because, um, you know, running was hurting. <laughs> but I remember during that period, because I think it was about a two month period, if I'm not mistaken. Um, God covered me. I was sleeping without the machine and I was getting rest and it was so crazy. I felt normal again because, you know, to be honest with you, if I could, I hate using the machine. I use it, but I prefer not to have to depend on something like that. But for the time being, I use it. But I remember I felt normal again, like, wow, Lord, I actually feel rested without the aid of this machine. And this is how cool God works. Before I even got the machine, I didn't know the day was coming. But the day before I got it, I started feeling those symptoms of sleep apnea again, where I wasn't getting enough sleep. And then the next day the machine came and it was like God's way of saying, I covered you during that time, but now that your machine's here, get back on what you need to do. And I just wanted to encourage anybody today that you might be going through situations, dilemmas and circumstances that are out of your control, but you have the control and the ability to trust God. You have the ability to say, God, in spite of this, I trust you. Even though this is happening, I trust you to protect me in the midst of this. And it's like God kept me in a cocoon amidst any potential ailments. It was like he was allowing me to be protected from any type of um, dis-ease or anything from that sleep apnea. And I just give him praise, glory, and honor. And I just wanna encourage someone today, you may be in a situation where you're facing turbulence and chaos, but God will protect you in the midst of that. You just need to call on him and trust him. So that's all I wanted to say. I look sleepy right now because I've had a late night. I need to drink some water and maybe get more coffee. I don't know. I got an appointment in a bit, but I wanted to encourage somebody today. If God can do the impossible for me, what makes you think he can't do it for you? Much love. God bless you. Oh, two things I did not do. One, I did not pray. And then two, I did not lead any, I didn't do the salvation prayer, which I do. Lord, I said it already without praying, but Lord, I thank you. And I pray this word blesses anybody who hears it. I pray you get the glory. And I pray that it ministers to the hearts and needs of those that you know, Father. Um, and I thank you in advance for using me as a vessel and for always being, um, always being in my life, being a constant and using me as a testimony in Jesus name. Amen. For anybody watching, if you don't have a personal relationship with God, the father, the only way to have one and get right with the father is through his son. And this comes through a personal confession of faith and a belief in your heart that Jesus is Lord. So just repeat that to me, Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. I believe God, the father raised you back from the dead. I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior.
And if you confess that and believe that in your heart that Jesus died and that God the Father raised him back from the dead and ask him to be your Lord and Savior, you will be saved from the penalty of your sins and your name will be written in the book of life and you will be headed to the place called heaven. But you also have purpose on this earth while you're here. And the reason why that's important is because the life without Jesus, unfortunately, is hell. And what I mean by that is when you die, there's only two places you can go, heaven or hell. And God loves you so much that he sent his son to take the punishment that you and I deserved on the cross for our sins. And when he died, he did that so he could fulfill the new covenant. He brought a new covenant, which was the shedding of his blood. And so by doing that, he was the ultimate sacrifice. Because before him, the, the Jews used to sacrifice bulls and goats and all that and sheep. He was the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Oh, you give me the preacher. And so God loved, God the Father loved us so much as a world, as a people. He said, I'm going to send my son to pay their debt. And we can receive this debt by asking Jesus into our life. If we don't receive it, we don't get it. It's kind of like the student loan aid debts. They can give us aid to, 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 to create a deficit in our debt, but we got to receive it. If you want for the Lord to wipe your slate clean of all your sins, you have to receive it. And that comes through a confession in your ear and a belief in here. You believe that he died and that God the Father raised him back from the dead. And you just ask him to be your Lord and your Savior. And the Spirit of God will come in your heart and do just that. And so you will be, uh, what's the word, saved by grace, but you will be um, justified by faith. And there's another word, but I'm, 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 anyway, doing that is what you want to do so that you can get in right standing with the Father. Because our works and our actions won't get us in right standing because it's not by works we are saved. It is by grace through faith, not of ourselves. Otherwise, we would be able to boast. So I encourage you, get in a Bible-based church, watch God transform your life. Get baptized in the water because that's the next step. Um, after this um, and after salvation and then also um, give your life to the Lord if you haven't already he's got a plan for you and get you a Bible anyway I'm gonna go do some I might, might take a brief nap but uh, you take care God bless y'all and um, yeah yeah Red Kingdom Red Kingdom I'm in Cali and I love the Cali teams I do but you know what this is home so it's Super Bowl baby KC Chiefs baby much love peace